Eric from Sydney, Australia. Paul, I applaud you and your company for the fantastic work at Octave Records. Thank you. Octave, just so you know, Octave doesn't make any money. This is, and, and we never intended it. I'd love for it to make money, <laughs> but it doesn't. It actually is, um, it does the opposite. But it brings us closer to music. It keeps us locked into that part of what we do here so that we stick to our core goals that from the very first days of PS Audio, we wanted to make everything from the AC wall socket to the loudspeaker to your ear. And that included the music. So we could control the entire chain. And when you hear an octave record on a PS system in the right environment, ah, it is a wonderful, a wonderful event. And so we keep doing it. My question is on how to get the sweet spot for listening to SACDs with high dynamic range. Hmm. On your recommendation, I bought the Tilson Thomas Mahler project, which is not octave, uh, in SACD, which, and, and uh, oh, one of the best out there. And they all have wonderful dynamic range. At the flip side of high uh, dynamic range mastering is, for example, on the Mahler Symphony 2, has very quiet passages that are barely audible. However, it is amazing when the thundering drum rolls around. What level of volume do you set when you listen to something like Mahler? Well, I generally set it about 20 points higher than I do for a normal piece. So let's say that I would play on the PMG signature. I would play a, an octave recording or a normal recording. Well, octaves are a little higher because they have pretty great dynamic range. So let's just say a commercial recording, I would play at volume 40. An octave recording, I would play at volume 45, 46. And the Tilson Thomas, 60, 65. And that's one of the tricks with a high dynamic range piece. And that's why your system has to really be up to it. You have to have speakers that can handle dynamic range without sounding compressed and electronics that can handle dynamic range without sounding compressed. Because the truth is, high dynamic range isn't just how loud it can go, it's how low it can go. Think about it. You're talking about a range of lowest to highest volume. Well, a CD has 100 dB, 90 something, you know, that's a lot. That's more than most people hear. And a modern DSD recordings, 120, 130 dB. Most of that is wasted. It's way down here and you can't hear it. So we have to turn it up in order to hear the lowest points. But that means when the guy on the bass drum gets whacking on that thing or whatever is happening with the orchestra, like some of the opening of the Mahler, you ever heard, you remember, I don't remember the, num uh, the number of that one, but where the, uh, the double basses, they'd start playing, oh man, uh, and the horns go and all of that. It's just, it's a wonderful piece of music. Love it. And you're going to have to turn it up to do that. So I'm usually 20 steps higher on that. And on some pieces, like a lot of the Deutsche Grammophon pieces that have pretty good dynamic range, when they get loud, whoa. You want to modulate that back down. <clears throat> not so on this DSD recording, not so on octave recordings, but some of the older recordings, in order to capture that dynamic range, you really have to crank it up, but then uh, it, it barks at you, it blares. So those rare recordings that have everything from the lowest levels to the highest levels on the right equipment, oh, that's what this sport's all about, in my, uh, my not-so-humble opinion. Okay. 